Drone warfare is changing everything. You can see it in real time, the evolution of drone warfare in Ukraine. My name is Darren Curtis. I'm just a professor that provides comprehensive uh, overview of what's going on in Ukraine daily. If you're not familiar with me, please sign up. If you are familiar with me, then you would seen something like this yesterday, all about the drones. Now, only half of you uh, watch this video, and I, I can tell from the statistics that, that not a lot of you did. I'm fascinated by drones. I think drones are telling the story of the war. If you didn't see this yesterday morning, uh, this video, it's still pretty fresh. Uh, go back and see this because it helps you understand what's going on on the battlefield and why things are going the way that they're going. Okay, so the Russians are doing things like hitting civilian uh, apartment buildings and uh, harassing civilians in the streets. Uh, the Herzan, they're, they're doing the, the um, human safari and overnight Shahed drones are attacking innocent apartment buildings. So that's what's happening there. But then Russians are bragging about killing endangered pelicans with FPV drones. Russians don't need a reason to kill. They just love doing that was a commentary. But I, I don't want to see endangered birds killed, but better that they're, the Russians are spending their drones on a bird than on a human Ukrainian. Um, and so the, the, the Russians are pursuing things very differently than the Ukrainians are. But the Russians are getting better at this and the countermeasures have to get better as well. Let me show you some of the statistics here. During the week from June 29th to the 7th of uh, uh, July, the Unmanned Systems Forces Group unit struck 5,366 unique enemy targets. That's a lot for a week, right? The drones are the story of the war here. 1,091 enemy personnel, 6, 6, 661 of whom were destroyed. 353 vehicles and 180 motorcycles, 120 artillery systems, 17 tanks, 31 units of armored vehicles. Additionally, 230 enemy unmanned aerial vehicles, the quadcopter or wing type varieties were destroyed. 115 enemy UAV launch sites were targeted. That's a lot. Like you can see some significant damage because of drones. Okay, now drones are also evolving in a meaningful way. And when I say that they're evolving, I'm not kidding. I'm not using that word lightly. Okay, here is Maria Berlinksa, the head of Aerial Reconnaissance Support Center. Russia will intensify its aerial T. Now, if you're around my uh, my uh, channel for some time, I don't pronounce this for the sake of YouTube. So, okay, we uh, we need to prepare for this, and we have almost no time. The Russians will definitely increase the warhead weight of Shahed drones. It will be increased to several hundred kilograms. Now, Shaheds have improved. They've gotten faster. They've gotten they they climb higher now. They have a greater punch with the with the amount of uh, explosives that they have on it, and they're they're improving. They can go a distance of say 30 to 50 to 100 kilometers. We will also soon see autonomous robots. These are even more dangerous than Shaheds. These are systems that are not controlled by humans and will be invulnerable to classic means of electronic warfare. That's right. So we've gone from just this radio controlled kind of system to we also have um, fiber optics and they're kind of limited on the battlefield. Shaheds don't do this. But when we see AI control, that's going to change things. And our means of defense is going to have to change as well. Okay, imagine the psychological state of people when they go out somewhere on the street in the city and hundreds of Russian drones are circling above the squares and the streets. If you think that's improbable, I will show you a video of them doing this kind of thing for civilian purposes right now. It's coming. Just I'm, I'm telling you as sure as I'm sitting here, this kind of thing is coming. There's also good news. It's still possible to prepare for this. It's necessary to deploy comprehensive air defense systems now, including automatic turrets, interceptor drones, in the long term, laser weapons. But of course, laser weapons are going to be of limited use once they're actually available. Um, there will be no apocalypse if we prepare ourselves, but you have to prepare and it's coming. And this is the story of the war in the same way that IEDs were the story of the war in Afghanistan and uh, in World War II, tanks and long-range bombers were the story of, of uh, World War II, right? So for its own security, it's very important that Europe be part of this modern defense system and to gain this experience because the Russians still want to do what Russians want to do. This is only the beginning. Okay, so 
This I want to, to watch. We're gonna, I'm going to read through this because it's not in English. Professional logic tells me that the Russians will definitely increase the warhead size of the Shahed drones. That's the ones that they use every night to harass civilians. In drone aviation, there's always a trade-off. You can carry a heavier payload, but you'll fly a shorter distance and vice versa. I'm confident that they'll make modifications where the range will be reduced, say a maximum of 200 kilometers. But, she goes on to say, the warhead will be increased to several hundred kilograms. This will be specifically aimed at T cities located 30 to 50 to 100 kilometers from the front line. So they'll have bigger bangs when they hit. That's the, the essence of this. And I think it's coming. These are systems not controlled by humans and will be invulnerable to conventional electronic warfare methods like taking out the crew. Like that's, it's not going to be easy to shoot these kind of systems down. Um, and they're going to harass civilians continually. For example, if an FPV drone is flying at you and you hit the crew, that solves the problem, even if the drone is connected by fiber optics. But if they're AI drones, then you have a whole different problem set, right? So she's going to go on and say, currently, they can't produce many of these cheap systems, but we're talking in the low thousands now, and they'll scale up to tens of thousands. And that's coming. That's the future of drone warfare. It is on its way. I, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, and I'm going to show you some videos about this. Just imagine the psychological state of people. You're walking down the street in Venista and above you, hundreds of Russian drones. And that's what I was reading earlier as well. Uh, circling over squares and streets, drones that at any moment could hit. Now I'll say it right away. There's good news. We can prepare for this and we have to think in terms of preparing for this. Okay. So what is the this that we're preparing for? Let me show you some of the things that can be done. But by the way, before I do that, Andrew Perpetua, who tracks daily hits of what things that have been blown up or exploded or whatever, uh, vehicles and other things, he said, this is how high drones are flying these days. It's why I laugh when people say laser defenses are going to do this and to defend anything. I think lasers are there. That'll be one thing. But a laser has a certain limited use. It's like a pistol. I mean, you can still shoot something with it, but you'd prefer a rifle if you had it because lasers can only be effective to such, such a range and Shahid drones fly even higher now uh, in order to avoid being shot down. Okay, this is, by the way, what a shot head looks like compared to this human being standing next to it. Yeah, that's something. And the comment here was, well, then now, when a swarm of drones flies past my window, at least I'll know what it looks like that just might take out half of my apartment. Yeah, that, that's, that's what it looks like. And they target civilians every day. Okay, now this is footage from China of 1,000 or 10,000 drones. If they can do this for a display and coordinate it like this, like what, what can they do for military purposes? Those are drones that you're seeing here writing in the sky. Okay, think about what they can do for military purposes. It's coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. Here's another image of this kind of thing, these swarms going up in the air. And when these swarms are coordinated coming at cities, it's going to be massive. These are not Shahids. These are FPV drones. But just think when the technology gets to that place. Uh, this is some imaging of uh, the of these things being uh, the Shahids being shot down or trying to target the Shahids to keep them from destroying the cities. But I'm telling you, drone swarms are just, it's amazing. These are drone swarms um, going through trees and being able to, like, they can sense what's around them and swarm through things. The future's here, and this is it. Okay, I was just finishing this, and then I just took one last look at the news, and I saw this. China unveils a sub launch carrier uh, carrier killer drone swarms. This was just today, like a, an hour or two ago. Uh, just just today, just a little while ago, um, Chinese affiliated social media accounts have been posting videos about China's newest form of carrier killing weapons, drone swarms. But these drone swarms are not your typical drone swarms launched from a ground position at targets near or above them. Instead, the video depicts these drones being launched from Chinese submarines. So the people in Taiwan are going to get nervous about this kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, so it's improving. It's what, what's happening here is just... Again, if they can do this, which is, it's it's eerily beautiful, but it's also eerie to think, what if this is used for military kind of purposes rather than a pretty display in the sky? I'm telling you, drones are evolving, and that's the point of this. If you haven't seen this 
previous video, please go back and look at it. Thank you for your time. Tell me what you think about that in the comments below. Any, any advice that you have or things that you can point me to, I'm happy to look at. Thank you for your time, the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.